What was that moment you got revenge? Part 3, number 37. I had the worst roommate ever. A 40-year-old guy who acted like he was 21. His parents support him and pay for his condo, which I rented a room in with no lease. As such, I had no tenant's rights, which he took advantage of. He was loud, drunk, drugged out, and yelling racial obscenities at the TV daily. He was constantly forcing me to listen to his rants about things he had no real knowledge about. This guy was the most spoiled, entitled, inconsiderate, narcissistic person I have ever met. The day I was supposed to move out, he was passed the F out from a days-long alcohol and drug binge. I moved all my stuff into the truck and was driving off. When it hit me, there was a possum carcass on the side of the road near the condo. I went back up, grabbed his barbecue tongs in a bag and picked up that carcass. I walked back up again, went in, opened the door to his room, and whipped that carcass onto his bed. Then walked out of that place for the last time. He never even stirred as the dead possum, rotting and baked by the sun, landed next to him with a sickening plop. He deserves worse, actually, but I did what I could. Number 38. This isn't as clever or conniving as some on here, but it still ranks as the number one top spot for my best revenge moment. I was 13 and was reclining on a beach chair. This boy about my age and his younger friend who I'd known for about a week were standing behind me and kept messing with the chair and wouldn't stop when I asked them to. Him and his friend were classic little bratty redneck children. The younger one had a rat tail mullet relevant for later. The entire time I'd known them, they were spouting off about how boys were doing this, but girls couldn't do that because they were girls, stuff like that. The last time they messed with my chair, I stood up, spun around, and looked the bigger one dead in the eye and told him he better stop. He looked right at me with a smirk on his face and asked, What are you going to do about it? As soon as the words left his mouth, I punched him dead in the eye and grabbed the younger kid's rat tail mullet and yanked it so hard he fell to the ground. Then I sat back down. Both started crying almost immediately and didn't mess with me again. Eight years later, and it's still the best feeling of revenge I've ever had. Number 39. Was staying at my girlfriend's house and a couple houses away was a group of people who would bend late into the night, go out, and then begin bending again. One night, after having a much-interrupted sleep, I overheard one of the girls in the house loudly ordering pizza to an all-night place in the cross. This is in Sydney. She gave her credit card number, and I quickly copied it down. The next day, I went on a flower delivery site and delivered an $80 bouquet to the four houses around the house on either side of the street with a note saying, Sorry for the noise. We apologize and won't do it again. They've been quiet ever since. Number 40. In eighth grade, I was hanging with two of my friends at the local HS. We just finished playing a pickup game of football. As we were walking to the bathrooms, I saw what I thought was a friend and said, Hey man, what's up? We had played Pop Warner together for years, so I knew him. He came out acting really tough and strange. Then about seven other black dudes came out with him. I guess he joined a gang over the summer. Anyway, they proceeded to jump me and beat the crap out of me while the friends I was with just stood there and watched. I'm not friends with them anymore. It was a long, bloody walk home I never forgot about. Anyway, football season came around and look who was on my team. We get paired together on a drill where one person holds the football and another person tackles. Both people lying flat on their back. Coach blew the whistle, and I never ran so hard in my life. I trucked the crap out of him to the point I cracked his helmet, and he cried like a little girl. I stood over him and said, where's your gang now? He showed me mad respect after that, never said a word to me. To this day, I still think about how awesome it felt. Number 41. I was once staying at a friend's house in the seventh grade. His older sister thought it would be a good idea to embarrass him in front of me by cracking an egg over his head from the top of the balcony when we got home from school. My friend was infuriated and woke me up at 5 a.m. the next morning, went into the kitchen and started whisking a bowl of eggs. Five minutes and five eggs later, we went downstairs to his sister's room where he poured the whole bowl of whisked egg onto her face. The look of horror as she woke up with her face covered in egg was probably one of the funniest things I have seen in my entire life. To this day, she has never effed with him again. Number 42. 
I was bullied a lot in middle school because, you know, middle school, I was a quiet, unassuming, itty-bitty girl who got along with the teachers and always did my homework slash answered questions slash blah blah blah. One day in class, this kid was being a D and throwing his stuff at me, whatever the usual. But when the teacher is turned away, I whip an eraser, one of his that he had thrown at this kid's face and hit him right in the middle of his effing forehead. He's stunned for a second and then tries to get me in trouble. B can't do that crap because A, it is his eraser, and two, no one believed that I would do something like that. Made my day. Number 43, it won't sound that great, but it was great to me. I was dating and living with this guy only for about six months, but in that time, he cheated on me repeatedly. I know shouldn't have stayed. He manipulated me, tried to control me, and had me paying for everything. Had a job for only a brief two months, and in the end, started hitting me. Oddly enough, he broke up with me. So, I got an apartment of my own and got all my crap out. Another ordeal. A few months later, I'm much happier and relieved to have gotten away from that experience. Me and my friend are watching a movie at about two in the morning when there's a knock on the door. I go to answer it and F face is there. He's crying, and his pupils are huge, and he is acting weird. I asked him if he was tripping and he said he'd eaten a lot of shrooms. Then he said he just needed to talk to me. It was winter, it was raining outside, and it couldn't have been better. I just slammed the door in his face, dead bolted it, and went back upstairs and had a good laugh with my friend. It just felt good to do that. It felt like some sort of revenge to me. It was satisfying, to say the least. Number 44 In sixth grade, I was bullied by basically my entire class. We had homerooms that would travel around together all day. There was one particular kid who was especially nasty. He was the athletic jock type and caused some emotional scarring because I'd never been made fun of before. Sixth grade. Fast forward to high school when the school had a dodgeball tournament. A lot of the teams dressed up in uniforms, and my team decided our uniform would be dresses. I'm a male. The jocks team was our first match. We proceeded to annihilate them. Me getting out five of the six people on the team, including the butt jock, all while I was wearing a low-cut dress. Number 45 probably won't get read, but here goes in middle school. I was kind of the ugly duckling. I had teeth too big and my smile was awful. No boobs. Didn't know how to dress. Horrible haircuts. No idea how to put makeup on. I also had a huge crush on this kid. Let's call him Mike. So Mike from 6th to 8th grade wouldn't give me the time of day made fun of me behind my back, laughed in my face, but awkward me still wanted to date him, got sent to summer school in between 8th and ninth grade where I proceeded to make friends with one of the more popular kids in my soon-to-be high school. Over the summer, I grew into my teeth, got boobs, new clothes, and learned makeup. Started freshman year looking like a different person. Mike saw me and ended up cornering me in the hallway where we had a conversation where he started telling me how good I looked and asked me out, because of the confidence of being friends with some of the cool kids, I laughed in his face, told him he had his chance, and lost it. That was his own fault, and I walked away smiling to this day, 17 years later. That's still one of my favorite memories of high school. Being able to turn down my crush because I was hot and he had missed out. Revenge is sweet. Number 46 Last year, the kid who sat behind me in math copied my answers for the last three tests. I told him to stop when I found out, and he lashed out on me. So, during the exam, I caught him taking my answers. So I started to put the wrong answers. At the end, he handed it in, and while walking back to his seat, I erased every answer I put in and looked him dead in the eye while doing it. Number 47. Not me, but my good friend got married to a guy that she met online. He was originally from the town we lived in, but he was stationed at a naval base in Washington State at the time. She found out that he cheated on her, and she went effing insane. She hopped in her car and drove from Iowa to Washington straight through. When she arrived in town, she was even more crazed and high on caffeine, and she went to his house and drove straight through his garage door. He was at work at the time, and by the time he got home, she had systematically destroyed every single thing he owned right down to taking every single CD out of its case and breaking it in half. She also used a can of spray paint to write sh The level of damage was outrageous. There really wasn't anything salvageable.
Best part, those effers are still married. Number 48. Not my personal revenge, but the older brother of a good friend of mine. He was a freshman in college and was in band slash on drumline. On a long bus ride, the upperclassmen all decided to lock him in the bus bathroom. They had peed everywhere and it was horribly disgusting. So the next time they all took a trip, he made cookies, but put laxatives in them and gave them out to all the upperclassmen. Needless to say, he was never effed with again. Thanks for watching. I am sure you all have a story or two about the sweetest revenge you have ever gotten. So let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.